InDesign contains a number of tools for editing, creating, and manipulating objects and text here within the application. So what I want to do for this movie is talk about the Tools panel. Now the Tools panel is typically located on the left hand side of the workspace. And if I click and drag, I can create a free floating panel out of it. And if I select the arrow buttons while it's free floating, I can turn this into a horizontal um, tools palette. And then I can change it back to vertical uh, double stack just by clicking on the double arrow icon again and select it again to change it to a single row. To snap it back to the dock, I simply click and drag and snap it back in there just like we could with our other panels. Now the tools are essentially divided into several sections and each of these sections play different roles here uh, when you're working with an InDesign. The first set is typically for object manipulation. The second set is typically for object creation and the third set is for object manipulation. And then we have some more sets here, and I'm going to go through these one by one. So the first tool in the tools panel is called the selection tool. And the selection tool allows me to select any object in my document. The direct select tool is similar to the select tool, but it allows me to select the object and manipulate its corners uh, via the anchor points. And then the third tool in that category is called the page tool, which allows me to select an entire page and manipulate it. And just under the page tool, we have the page gap tool. And this allows me to edit uh, within the gaps and we're going to go over that in detail in a future lesson. Now in the second set we have the object creation tools. In the first set of tools we have my text or type tool. Now you'll notice that under this tool there's a small down arrow icon and what that means is that there are other tools located within that. So if I press and hold we can expand it to see the additional tools. So in this case, we have a we have the type tool which shows by default. And then we have the type on path tool, which is great if you are creating paths or lines and want text to flow on those. And I'm going to showcase and demonstrate that in a later movie as well. We also have the line tool for creating lines. And we have the pen tool with additional tools under that for creating and deleting anchor points within objects and then we also have the convert direction point tool. We also have tools for drawing freehand so if you have a steady hand these tools come in handy but we have the pencil tool, the smooth tool, and the erase tool. We also have frame creation tools and these are great if you want to place text or images on your document. Uh, you can create a rec rectangle shape frame, an ellipse frame, or a polygon frame. And then we have the shape tools that allow you to create shapes anywhere in your document. And this is the rectangle, ellipse, and polygon. And underneath that we have the object manipulation tools. We have the scissor tool for creating splices within uh, our objects or lines. We also have free transform tools. And if I expand that, we also have Rotate, Scale, and Shear. Now, I will typically not use Rotate, Scale, or Shear because the free Transform tool will allow you to do most of those uh, directly within that, but it's entirely up to you. We also have the Gradient tool for applying gradients to our objects. And we have the Gradient Feather tool for feathering or blending our gradients or colors within our objects. Underneath that we have some additional tools. We have the note tool for applying notes to any area in our document. We also have the 
Measure tool and the eyedropper tool. Now, the eyedropper tool will essentially allow you to clone formatting from one object to another or text uh, formatting from one text area to another. And then the measure tool, which you'll probably hardly ever use, allows you to measure the distance from one object to the other. And we have the grapper hand tool, which we talked about already in prior movies, and the zoom tool, which we should also already be familiar with. And then in the next panel, we have uh, an area which essentially allows us to select between fill and stroke colors. So you'll notice that right above that, there is a little arrow icon that if we push that will allow us to switch between the fill and the stroke and the colors. And if we go below that, there is a drop down menu where we can apply color, apply gradient, or remove uh, fill from either the fill or stroke that's located above. And yet below that, and we've already talked about this in prior movies, uh, here we have our preview bleed and uh, presentation. These are our screen modes or screen buttons so we can uh, quickly jump if we want to see what this would look like in preview. Um, but we'll typically work in normal in this case. Now, a great thing about the tools is that all the tools that are located here in InDesign, you can work with this shut because anything that you do under this Windows menu has an associated keyboard shortcut to make that function. And in our next movie, we're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts in general and how you can use them to switch between your tools and create your own.